Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Retro Game Tactical video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to start things out with the Radeon RX 590. As the name implies, and as we already know, it is the slight tweak version of the RX 580. It's built on the 12 and M process, which means a slight die shrink, and perhaps more importantly than that, does carry a higher clock speed. The core frequency is roughly 200 megahertz higher than what we had previously seen. There are no additional compute units, and the underlying technology is essentially identical, at least from what we understand. So what does that actually mean in terms of performance? We have a couple of benchmarks which have leaked out to the internet which tell us this very thing. The RX 590 on the Crazy preset at 1080p scores 3700 points, the average all batches frame rate 38.8, average frame rate with normal batches is 47.7. And yet another benchmark where we can also see CPU frame rate as well. Yes, it is definitely improved compared to that of, let's say, the 580, but how much improved? Well, it's looking to be roughly on par with earlier leaks that we'd seen, around the 5-10% over the 580. There are a couple of reasons behind this, of course. One, we are only seeing a clock speed bump, at least from what we gather at the moment, on the GPU. And secondly, the underlying technology is essentially identical. We are not looking at a drastically increased number of compute units, for example. You would have only had managed to, let's say, bump those up to 40 compute units with, once again, the same clock speed as we're looking at now, then obviously numbers would be considerably different. But it's not doing that. AMD are just looking to distance themselves a little bit more from the 1060 and aim to compete in the mid-range section, which this card will do rather admirably. For those wondering, the price point supposedly is going to be around the 280 to 300 US dollar mark. Although, of course, it's probably going to depend heavily upon the version of the card you go with. Perhaps some retailers are also going to do some price gouging. And, of course, AIBs themselves are also going to release various variants of the card. Some are going to be factory overclocked, which probably will push the price up a little bit more. But I suspect for the bargain uh, basement cards around the 300 US dollar mark is going to be what you're expecting to pay, which probably will put it above the GTX 1060, including the GTX 1060 GDDR5 X variant, which is going to be launching soon as well. Another story doing the rounds right now is concerning Nvidia's RTX technology, specifically the Battlefield 5 requirements for running RTX. So let's have a look at the specs first of all for the recommended system requirements. It requires a 64-bit Windows 10 operating system, unsurprising, a Ryzen 3 1300X, or you can also run a 4790 or equivalent uh, 12 gigabytes of RAM, pretty standard there, a 580 or a 1060, and of course a GPU which is DirectX 11 or above which, well, those GPUs are, so it kind of goes without saying. But while those specs don't raise any eyebrows, the recommended PC system requirements for DXR do. For a start, it requires the update for Windows 10, the 10th October 2018 update, also known as 1809, uh, and the CPUs are considerably more hefty in their uh, requirement. It's either a 2700 or an i7-8700 processor. R memory is also bumped from 12 gigabytes to 16 gigabytes. And of course, it requires an NVIDIA RTX 2070 card. And of course, they point out that for ray tracing, DirectX ray tracing compatible card is a requirement. But disk space remains the same, so it doesn't require any extra there. So a lot of people seem very critical of this, of the specifications. Well, I have a couple of thoughts. The first is that Honestly, if you have the ability to purchase an RTX 2070 or above, there's a really good chance that you're probably not running a really old processor. The thing is that while these specifications are certainly high, we don't know exactly what the GPU and CPU are going to be doing in their respective tasks. So obviously one of the key things is to keep the frame rate high, but is it 
because there needs to be a lot of uh, additional instructions issued from the CPU to the GPU. So is that one of the reasons? Is it also perhaps that the drivers have a higher overhead or is it just a function of how Battlefield 5 has implemented ray tracing? Because obviously it's still early days. Every developer is probably going through different stages and different processes with their particular engine to adopt the technology of ray tracing. Ultimately, it's really difficult to know that. And until we actually get Battlefield 5, run it on a ray tracing card and start to run it across multiple systems, not just the systems that they recommend, but also, for example, on a Fred, Risp, Fred Ripper system, excuse me, and other CPUs which perhaps are older, and start to plot CPU usage across different resolutions and different ray tracing cards, it's really, no, it's really difficult to know exactly whether a DICER being a little over enthusiastic with the specifications and exactly how much additional work is being plonked onto the CPU. And it's also going to be fascinating to see how the GPU's utilization shifts as well, particularly at really low resolutions. For example, it would be really cool to see what happens if you're running the game at, let's say, 720p, enable ray tracing, and then to see how the CPU performance uh, adjusts accordingly. So that would be kind of cool. And finally, AMD are launching its discrete Vega mobile graphics chips. These have been hinted and teased for some time now, but they are now debuting alongside various Apple products. So when the Apple Refresh 15-inch MacBook Pro is launched in November, it will come with a choice between two mobile GPUs, either the AMD Radeon Pro Vega 20 or the Pro Vega 16. They're still built on the 14nm process and of course contain technologies such as next generation compute units, NCU, rapid pack math, and alongside this HBM2. According to Apple's own internal testing, it delivers up to 60% faster graphics performance for the most demanding video editing, 3D design and rendering workloads. For those wondering if we're going to see Windows variants of this, in other words standard Windows laptops, sporting these particular GPUs. It has not been confirmed yet, unfortunately. There have also been a couple of leaked 3D Mark results for this, which we can presume to be accurate as they are stating that they are the Radeon Pro Vega 20 card. Uh, I'll plonk them on screen now. But once again, they are very different systems that are being tested and obviously this is not indicative of Apple's own performance. Either way, it is pretty damn cool that we're finally starting to see these uh, GPUs emerge and it's going to be very interesting to see just how popular these particular choices are. I really hope that we do see the Windows variants of them as well though. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, comment and subscribe if you did and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now. Thank you.